Um, so it's my training is very dynamic because it, it changes. Like I'm using, I'm doing everything. And again, that's my challenge is I've got to make sure I give myself a set window saying next six to 12 weeks is going to be muscle building. So you're going to do this program. And yes, you want to get better at handstands or yes, you want to get better at jujitsu, but you can't focus on that right now. They're going to be on maintenance mode and you're going to do yeah. muscle building now and it's coming. Delay that gratification. Don't try to do it all, all, all at once. Mm -hmm. I've tried and you burst into flames and it's, it's, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. No one likes that. Yeah. Yeah. So calories in, calories out. Where do you stand on some of this? Oh, fuck. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Well, it, you know, like we've talked a lot about training and training. Uh, we actually kind of think on this podcast that uh, training still isn't like talked about enough. And your performance in the gym is a huge factor. And it is where a lot of people struggle. But a lot of people really struggle with the food side of things. So yeah. where do you kind of stand on um, this? Look, you, you can't refute this idea of calories in, calories out. Okay, you need to, if you want to, lose fat or if you want to build muscle, whatever it is, we need to, we're playing with this, um, the laws of thermodynamics. You, you need to adhere to the fact that if you want to lose weight or if you want to lose fat, you need to in some meaningful way be in this calorie deficit. But not to refute what I just said, <laughs> even though but usually comes up with that, I think we hyper-focus on that. We oversimplify things and there's a lot of confusion around that. Okay. Um, and this is where we kind of miss the forest for the trees um, because we're focusing on this minutia. Now, how do I best put this? Um, because it's a very complicated thing, in my opinion. But it can also be simplified in a way that helps to communicate the message appropriately. So here's an example. How many calories do you eat right now, roughly? I got no idea. And Seema, <laughs> please tell me something. <laughs> <For me? laughs> you got to work with me here. you got to work with me. You know, it, it, it's interesting because, I mean, I used to track a lot when I was doing yeah. bodybuilding. Yeah. But nowadays, there will be certain days where I know I'm in a deficit. And there will be certain days when I can feel in the morning, oof, I need to eat more food, that I'm in a surplus. So probably anywhere between some days, 22 to 2,400 calories. And then other days, 3,000 to 3,500 if it's if I've been in a deficit for quite a few days right, so right. it's it's dynamic yeah, it's but i don't yeah. track anymore sure. i just have a mental understanding yeah. Of it. yeah and that's that's fine um so let's say like on average let's say um, eating around three thousand ish calories for sure let's say we wanted to get you like dick skin lean shredded which i mean mm -hmm. you already are so it's fuck <laughs> <laughs> but well, let's say we want to get you like yeah like completely disgustingly shredded where i want to see like Every, I want to see your heart beating yeah. through through your through your chest there somehow magically. Um, <laughs> we would say, okay, we've got to start putting you in a calorie deficit consistently. Mm -hmm. So you might say you're eating three thousand on average now. Let's bring you down to twenty nine hundred. Let's bring you down to twenty eight hundred. Let's just gradually decrease things, right? Um, and must say same for you as well, Mark. We say, yeah, you're eating say three thousand. Let's just gradually just bring things down. This is us adhering to the calories in, calories out, which we know works. Um, and if Took an extreme approach and I said to you, well, instead, why don't we put you on to 1,000 calories? Mm. Why don't I put you on to 1,500? You know, why don't I do that on average? You did that recently. I did that recently. <laughs> and this is, where, this is where we're sort of going with it because if we do that, people are going to be like, that's bad. You're going to shut down your metabolism. You're going to fuck yourself up. You're going to die. You're going to lose all your muscle. You're going to ruin your hormones. You're going to completely derail yourself. And it doesn't happen. It can happen. And it does happen in some people. But... Taking that fear and saying, we should never put you on 1,400 calories, we should never put you on 1,000 calories, that's focusing too much on calories mm. and not what actually matters, which is slightly different, which is energy. Okay, If I have you eating in a calorie deficit, if I have you eating 1,000 calories a day, on paper, you are in a calorie deficit, but your body, your actual physical physiology is not in a deficit. We've created an energy deficit, but your body will make up for it in some way. Your body will get that extra 2,000 calories that it needs to maintain itself from body fat, which would be great, um, and maybe from muscle mass, probably less likely, depending on how we're setting things up. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing you can do, because it can also create metabolic adaptations, and we get this slowdown in your, in your BMR. In some way there, that's, what, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. But for all intents and purposes, if you have sufficient fuel, sufficient energy available on your body, there's no reason why I can't slash away 2,000 calories from your diet overnight and your body sh can't just go to that energy on your system and use that. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a caveat to that. I would not do that to you. Definitely not because there is a rate at which your body can pull energy from its system in terms of like the amount of, and that is dependent on the amount of fat that you have on your body. And there may be some physiological things like 
your mitochondrial density, how much mitochondria you have, because that's how that's where your body is going to be burning up fat to use as a fuel as a as a fuel source. Um, so I think people freak out and they think we'll take this slow methodical approach, and it actually doesn't always play out that way. Like, what are the drawbacks to a slow methodical approach? If I put you on twenty nine hundred calories instead of three thousand, that's fucking hard to track. So, yeah. Unless if you are a robot, it's very very hard to track. How easy is it for you to adhere to a deficit if I take away two thousand fucking calories? Even if you fuck that up, you're still going to be in a deficit. Yeah. So what we're really playing with here is um, making sure that your body is in enough of a deficit where it's easy for you to track it. But it's also um, meeting the points where it's not going to create too much adaptation, mm -hmm. which is going to be dependent on how quickly can you physically lose body fat. My belief and my, my opinions and my, my workings around this is I believe we should always be trying to, if we're trying to lose fat, I'm um, taking that as the context. We should be trying to diet as hard as we physically can. Get as much fat as you can. Do it as aggressively as possible, as quickly as possible. Hi, Project Family. I hope you guys are doing well today. I want to give you guys a quick piece of fitness equipment lifting history. The hip circle that you see before you is actually the first hip circle ever. All right, there were no booty bands before the hip circle, which is pretty interesting. That's why you see it in gyms like The Rock. We've seen Kim K using it on Instagram. It is the OG, but that's also why we have the slingshots, gangster wraps, knee sleeves, elbow sleeves, everything that you're going to need in the gym so that you can protect yourself before you wreck yourself. So, Andrew, you tell the people how to get it. Yes, that's over at markbellslingshot.com. And at checkout, enter promo code POWERPROJECT10 to save 10% off your entire order. Uh, links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. Okay, and I want to I want to rip away as much as I can, and that's going to be different for different people. Mm -hmm. And this is where we come back to my example for myself personally. When I started um, dieting in December, I, I I went from about twenty five to three twenty five hundred to three thousand calories down to a thousand overnight. Now, was it perfectly a thousand? Probably wasn't. I was probably inaccurately tracking a few things, mm -hmm. but there was definitely a significant drop by at least a thousand, if not maybe two thousand ish calories on average um, every single day, mm -hmm. and that got me very lean to begin with, but then of course it stalled out. How long was the diet? That was that was the first instant. The first iteration of it was four weeks. I okay. did that, and I dropped maybe um, it was about four or five kilos. So what's that? About maybe ten to fifteen ish pounds. Yeah. And I got significantly leaner from doing that. Um, people would say, "Okay, now you've plateaued out. You've got to go lower than that." It's like, no, you don't. I've gotten leaner now, which means I've got less available fuel on my body, which means my body can't take as much energy from my body as readily. It won't do that. So what I need to do now is I need to eat more food. I've got to still be in a deficit to be able to lose fat, but I can still eat more food by doing that to make up for the loss of available energy on my body because there is still that rate mm -hmm. of fat loss that your body can achieve at a particular time. So. The first five kilos or so that I dropped, I was eating 1,000 calories. The next five kilos that I dropped, I was eating between 1,500 to 2,000 calories. But the, the next five kilos take a little bit longer to drop? It took a little bit longer. And that's it. Like As you get leaner, mm -hmm. you, because you have less available fuel in your body, you can't diet as hard. Yeah. But for most people who have got a lot more body fat, diet fucking hard. Like take those cal As long as it's within your preference, of course, but just why would you drag it out? Yeah. Why would you drag out something over 16 weeks when it could take you four weeks instead? Yes, it's a bit tougher, but you know what? Like, it's going to be tough anyway. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be easier for you to manage to go into a more aggressive diet and then just, again, monitor your feedback and understand what are you really doing. I'm not doing a crash diet on 1,000 calories for the sake of it. I'm doing it because I've got available fuel. When I have less available fuel in my body, I can't diet as hard, so I won't diet as hard. So by the end of it, yeah, I was only in maybe a hundred calorie deficit by the very end of my diet when I got really lean. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm only really eating a hundred calories, maybe 200 calories below my needs. And that's harder to track, but it's um, only at the very end. At the very start, like assuming my body can pull the body fat off its system very easily, I don't feel a thing. Like I didn't suffer. I didn't suffer from eating so few calories. Um, and it kind of flies in the face of what is done traditionally. Yeah. That's not why I do it. I do it from a physiological perspective of saying, yeah, I've got available fat. Let's do that. Now, what do most people do? The flip side of that is very, very, very different. People will, will diet very, very slow and they'll continually decrease their calories over time. Mm -hmm. So at the point when they're at their leanest, they're eating the fewest calories, which makes perfect sense. Okay, we, we eventually you need, need to be, if you're like completely bodybuilder shredded, you need to be eating very few calories. But there's a big mismatch when they're at their leanest and they have the fewest amount of available energy on their body, mm -hmm. they're eating the fewest calories. 
So of course you're going to feel like shit. Of course your gym performance is going to go down. Of course you're going to potentially create more of these negative adaptations. Like one study that people bring up a lot when I talk about these aggressive diets is The Biggest Loser. There's a, a, a study done a, a few years ago on The Biggest Loser contestants where they were um, showing that many years after they've lost all that weight, their basal metabolic rate had stayed down. Like that tells you why you shouldn't do crash diets. And it's like, mm. no, it does, it does not, that's not what it's saying. It's saying that this is what's happened to those people. We need to unpack why has that happened. And I don't know for sure, but one of my takes on it is like, yeah, they dieted too hard, but they also did a fuckload of training. And there was a big imbalance. They were throwing a lot of stressful insults on their system. And there's a big mismatch there where they're trying to um, push their body. And then what we know in terms of adaptation now is, yeah, that's going to happen more aggressively. You're going to get more adaptations happening to your body more aggressively if you're mismatching your training and your performance in your everyday lifestyle with your nutrition intake. Mm -hmm. But this is what we're doing with people's diets all the time is we progressively adapt people down to the point where they are very lean, they're eating very few calories, and they're doing a fuckload of training. Of course, that's going to be unsustainable. And of course, it's going to create these issues where they're going to get these adaptations. If they took a more methodical approach and said, okay, when you're at your leanest, you have the least amount of available energy on your body. You need to support that by putting more food in. Mm. And as long as you are in a calorie deficit still at the end of the day, you will still get leaner. It will be much slower. It'll be much trickier. It will be much complex, m much more complex. <laughs> Good English, Eugene. Um, <laughs> So, but that's probably a smarter approach. So when I was at my leanest around March or so, um, March or April or whatever it was, I was eating the highest amount of calories. My rate of fat loss was slow. I had to be so, so meticulous with things. But by that point, hey, I'm already fucking shredded. I'm already lean. Do I really need to go a bit further? I don't. I can maintain this now. Yeah. And that's a big deal. Um, whereas at the start when I've got a lot of fat to lose, just push it hard. Mm -hmm. Push it hard because you've got the available fuel there. Um, so it's not breaking any laws. There. It's just being more mindful about what are we really manipulating here? We're manipulating not calories. We're manipulating energy, energy availability. Your body's got to get energy from somewhere. And if it can't, it will create adaptations. So whenever we take away our energy, um, in terms of the, the, um, energy on our body or energy from our, from our food, we've got to make sure we're balancing that out in some way. Otherwise your body will balance it out by decreasing hormone production, mm -hmm. by decreasing immune system function, by decreasing all its regenerative recovery properties. And that's what we want to avoid. Um, the other side to this is people say, if you eat a thousand calories and go back up to maintenance, you're going to be fucked. You're going to put on the weight back on. I was like, well, it's not true. Like there's a difference that people forget between the deficit, there's a calorie surplus, and then there's a maintenance. Yes. And maintenance may mean an extra thousand calories, depending how far you push things. But that thousand calories, if it is true maintenance, you shouldn't put on any weight, mm -hmm. apart from maybe glycogen fluid fluctuations, but there shouldn't be significant fat gain from that. And that's what I would do. So in between my, my aggressive dieting periods of four weeks or three to four weeks at a time, I would have a couple of weeks where I'd eat at maintenance yeah. and I wouldn't put on any body fat from that, despite eating an extra 1500 calories. Cause I'd go from eating a thousand up to 2,500. I wouldn't put on any body fat. Mm -hmm. I'd feel great, perform, I'd be, I could handle more volume in the gym, cool. And then I'll just drive it back down again. Yeah. Hey guys, I've seen that you guys have been commenting about how much you hate the whispering outro, asking you to like, comment, and subscribe. So I'm going to whisper again because I know you don't like it. <laughs> so hey, I know we're bringing you some good content. So like, comment, subscribe, and share it with some friends so we can all help each other out. And maybe I'll stop whispering in your ear. Bye.